Welcome to this Bite Size PD. The topic for this session is using the Google Assignments LTI 1.3 in Canvas. The learning intention for this session is you're learning about the Google Assignments LTI 1.3 so that you can begin using this LTI in your Canvas course or courses and also begin the transition if you're using the current L Google LTI integration to the new integration. And the success criteria for this session, you'll know you're successful when you can use this new LTI to embed Google Doc files, to add them to a module, and to even create an assignment that either distributes a Google Doc template or allows students to work directly in CSD Docs and submit their work in Canvas. Here's a rundown of the agenda for this session. So I'll start with what is the Google Assignments LTI 1.3 and why this change? I'm going to provide a demo, a teacher version, and a student view uh, using the Google LTI, the Google Assignments LTI to embed a Google Drive full file, to add a file to a Canvas module, and to even create and submit an assignment using the LTI. And then I'll end with some considerations and recommendations and moving forward. So what is the Google Assignments LTI 1.3 and why the change? So this is an LTI that was created and supported by Google. Uh, in the past, the Google or the current LTI that we've been using over the, I can't remember how many years, uh, it's been created and supported by Canvas. So as teachers and even students have experienced disruption or some issues, because it wasn't created and supported by Google, Things weren't always fixed quickly. Uh, there's still been a few minor glitches here and there. So with this transition to the Google Assignments LTI 1.3, it's been a more consistent and effective use and uh, less disruption has been experienced by teachers and students. Uh, this allows you to streamline assignment distribution where you can assign Google Docs, Sheets, Slides, etc. Um, it automatically creates a personalized copy of project documents for students to edit. So think of a way for you, the teacher, to create a template for students to start from so they're not starting from scratch. And it also supports assigning multiple files in one assignment or even, even allowing students to attach multiple files to submissions. Uh, the next few bullets are actually my favorite part of the Google Assignments LTI 1.3 and one that I think teachers would get excited about. Um, this new integration allows teachers to see which students have started their assignments and even when they've submitted without having to go into SpeedGrader. Um, teachers can view in-progress work, like real-time work, and provide feedback in real time to students um, before they're even submitting their assignment. And this last bullet kind of goes with providing feedback. Uh, with this new integration, teachers can actually use the power of Google Docs to give that rich, rich feedback, including margin comments, strike throughs, and even edit suggestions. So these are all things that I'm going to demo for you today so you can see what the teacher view looks like and the student view. And then just I wanted to re reiterate, so the current Google integration that we've been using in our district, originally we've been told by Canvas that it will be turned off June 30th, 2024. I was able to get an extension for this. I wanted to allow teachers to use the summer months if wanted or needed to start transitioning some documents over to the new LTI. So this June 30th date is actually going to be Friday, August 16th. That's the Friday before school starts. And then once again, the main reason for this change and one that I think is a good one. This is an integration supported by Google, which will result in improved fun functionality and less disruption throughout the year. So the first thing I'm gonna demo for you is how to embed Google Drive files um, on like a page, an assignment page using the rich content editor. So the first step is you click, you open and edit a page like you normally do. Uh, You'll click the apps icon and then select Google Drive LTI 1.3. You'll be asked, and once again, I'll demonstrate this for you. You'll be asked to select a file from your Google Drive. Uh, you will be asked to connect your account if it's the first time you're using it. And then you locate, select, and add the file. So going into one of my Canvas pages, I'm just going to go to an assignment page I have. So I'm going to edit my assignment settings. So when embedding using the um, or when embedding on an actual page. So you'll see where I have my directions for the assignment. Maybe there's a presentation or like a slides I want to I include. Uh, you put your cursor where you want 
the embed to go or the embedded document or slideshow to go. You click the external tool option, which is a little plug. And then if you don't see Google Drive LTI 1.3, you want to click on view all and it will be one of your options you will see that there's google apps and google drive lti 1.3 it's the 1.3 you want to select because google apps will go away uh, it will ask you to make sure it's you so make sure you're using your csd docs account and if you haven't connected your google drive to your canvas account this will help you get that connected as well but click on select file it's going to open up my Google Drive. I find the document or the slideshow I'm looking for. I'll do this presentation. So I selected it. I click Add. And I'm going to click Attach. And now the presentation, if I click Save, and I can still continue editing this assignment, this page, if I need to. And now that slideshow is on my presentation. And so this is a way, one, one reason I like embedding slideshows, especially slideshows on whether it's assignments or pages, uh, students are more likely to go through and read if it's right there in front of their face. So that's one reason why I like to embed if possible, or if appropriate, I should put it that way. The next thing I'm gonna add or demo for you is how a teacher will add a Google Drive file to a module. So the step one is you go to your module section, you click the plus sign in the, um, the module you want it to go to and you select external tool and you'll select Google Drive LTI 1.3 and then click add item. Just like we saw with the previous demo, you'll be asked to select a file from your Google Drive. More than likely you may be asked to verify and maybe log in. Just make sure you're using your CSD docs account. You locate, select, and add the file. So going back to my teacher view in Canvas, so here's the module I want it to, to be added to. I click that plus sign to add something to my module. Change it from, if it defaults to assignment, that's where it always defaults for me. I just make sure I select external tool. And then it wants me to select the external tool, which will be Google LTI 1.3. Once again, the Google Drive will eventually go away. Google Drive LTI 1.3 is what the new integration is and what will be moving forward. So once again, if you see a different, if it's not your CSD Docs account, you wanna switch accounts, but since it's my CSD Docs, I'm gonna select file. And then I can find the slideshow or even document, so a Google Drive file, I click add attach and it looks like nothing happened but if you pay attention you'll see there's now a url that's how i know it is picking up one of my google drive files i click add item and so now it shows a little link i can publish it and when i click on it it now provides a direct connection to whatever file i decided to link for my students So the next thing I'm going to demo for you is how to create an assignment uh, for your students using the new Google LTI um, integration. And if you're already using the current Google integration, the process is still very much the same with a few additions. And it's not anything major, but it's good things to be aware of. But I think the nice thing to know is the process is still something you're very much familiar with. And if you're new to this process, it's actually a pretty simple process to follow. So step one, you create your assignment like you normally do. Um, you add whatever assignment details you want, links to resources. But for the submission type, you want to select external tool and you select the Google Assignments LTI 1.3. Step two, you link your account. Step three, you create or attach files that you want um, students to access or use. You select your grading option, then locate, select, and add the file. And I'll talk about uh, the grading option. You'll see, well, I'll talk about it right now. There's Google Assignments and there's Canvas SpeedGrader. I would not recommend utilizing the Google Assignments unless this is something you're already using, you're familiar with, but knowing the teachers in our district and how much Canvas SpeedGrader is used. And this right here was a big reason in Canyons why we have kind of 
drug our feet a little bit of rolling this out because the Canvas speed grader wasn't always an option. And so I just know our teachers utilize Canvas speed grader so often that until that was available, we really didn't want to go there. So keep it on Canvas speed grader because this is what allows you to grade and view submissions right in the speed grader option. So let's go ahead and demo that. So I'm just going to create a new assignment. And when I create new assignments, I do it from the module section. So I'm just gonna do new assignment. You can tell I've done this a few times. So I'm gonna call this states of matter three, or my four. I'm gonna add my item. So I'm gonna go into my editing screen and I can add my directions and any additional resources. I'm a big proponent on clear directions and any help resources that can support students. You still do your point value, your assignment group, how you want it to display. So once again, you're creating your assignment like you normally would. Uh, I'm gonna jump down here for a moment. You can still do group assignments, peer reviews, and even um, assign to, but I'm gonna change the submission type to external tool, click on find, and as I've been mentioning before, you're gonna see two options, one of which will eventually go away. The Google Docs cloud assignment was the original integration we've been using and will be going away. The new one is the Google Assignments LTI 1.3. So I'm gonna click on that. It's going to ask me to make sure it's my CSD Docs account. And so this is where I'm gonna start from top to bottom. So with the Google integration, there is a plagiarism checker. And when you enable this, you're gonna notice you only get five assignments that will check for plagiarism. So if you're a teacher that utilizes copy leaks, uh, you're not able to have copy leaks check for plagiarism using the Google LTI. However, if there are certain assignments you want to utilize a um, plagiarism checker for, no, you'll have five um, options. And I believe it's five options per Canvas course. Um, but I'm not gonna do a plagiarism checker, so I'm gonna hit cancel, but that is an option. You have the option to create a doc sheet, slide, or drawing. Um, this is where students can start, which is a blank, a blank document or a blank sheet. Uh, I like utilizing attach because this is a way for me to provide a template that students can start from, but you can decide. I know a lot of you already have some things that you utilize. Um, I'm gonna look for the document. So states of matter, I have a template that I like to use. Hopefully it comes up. There we go. I'm gonna select my states of matter template and add. And I should work on my <laughs> title. So notice how it's saying template, template, template. Um, just know how it's titled in your Google Drive is how it's titled for students. So you may want to be aware of the title before you attach. And you'll see where I can actually attach multiple documents if I want. I'll be honest, I haven't played with that part too much. Uh, so if you're someone who does want to attach multiples, maybe try it out and see how it looks and how it works for you. And then once again, when it comes to the grading option, my recommendation would be to keep it with Canvas Speed Grader. This is what would allow you to use Canvas to grade, connect it to that um, grade book. And if you're a teacher in our secondary schools who pass things back to Skyward, that will allow you to do the pass back. And click Create. And then hit Select. And I know it's connected because once again, it feels like nothing happened because you're not seeing anything right away. This URL that appears is letting me know that something has been connected. And then I'm going to click on save and publish. And here is how it looks. So right now I can get a quick overview of the total points, the due date if I have one. If I decide I wanna have a plagiarism checker, I can click it on again, the files that are attached. And right now I'm seeing no student submissions. This is the area where as students uh, access the assignment and get started, you're going to start seeing a list of students appear. And um, <clears throat> I'm gonna show you what that looks like in just a moment. So let me jump back to the presentation just to make sure I'm not missing anything. 
Oh, so this this um, slide, I do talk more about the Google Assignments versus SpeedGrader. So if you want to get more information about, maybe you do want to explore the Google Assignments, this information here is for you, but I, once again, would really stick with Canvas SpeedGrader. So when I talk about the two noteworthy features, um, I've been kind of alluding to it. One where as students access your assignment, you're gonna be able to see which students have opened it and you'll see where it says assigned. This is telling me that they've at least started or at least got the document. Assigned will change to submit. And then the leaving comments and annotating the student document, you can do that right within Google. So let me go out of this. I'm gonna show you a student view. So I am now in, as a student, I'm gonna to go to modules and I'm gonna find that states of matter assignment. So a states of matter four. And so because I'm, I'm also in incognito mode, so it's gonna ask me to sign in. And I believe students might be asked to sign in the first time they're accessing a Google LTI assignment. All they have to do is click on sign in and sign in with their CSD docs account and password, like their username and password. So I'm signing in as a student. Let's try this again, there we go. Just gonna refresh the page, okay. So when a student is accessing the assignment, there's two ways they can do it. They can click on the open to attach and submit, or they can just click right here on the file name. Knowing students, when they're not, before they're ready, if they're just accessing the assignment to get started, more than likely they're gonna click on just the link of the file, and then they'll click on this option, the open to attach and submit when they're ready to submit the assignment. So I'm gonna do it that way. So I'm gonna click on, the name of the file. So this is going to open that template, that document into the student's um, CSD docs account. And you'll see they can actually even edit the title. But what I like about it is it puts the student's name first and then the student can come here and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do water for a solid. I know this is wrong, but, um, so I'm gonna put a few things so you can see what it looks like on the teacher end. Um, and then, okay. So you'll see on the screen, there's nowhere for the student to submit, but I actually don't wanna submit yet because I want you to see what it looks like on the teacher end when the students have started and they're working. So going back to the teacher view, I'm gonna refresh the screen. And what I'm going to see is Ava's name is now going to appear it's showing me it's assigned. So this is an indicator that the student has started. If I click on Ava's name and click on her document, this is where I can actually see, it looks like I'm in, in Google, I am in Google Docs, so I'm actually in there real time. And as the teacher, I could leave a comment and say, is water really a solid? Why would, why might it not be? And I can leave the comment. I could be even as bold as the teacher to strike through. I can highlight, maybe I wanna highlight green, letting her know, yep, this is right. Um, I can leave any other comments. So as the teacher, I'm leaving real-time feedback. And if I go back to the student view, I didn't even refresh the screen. I'm seeing the feedback right away as the student. So I can say, oh, my teacher said this. You know what, I knew that was wrong. So maybe I tell my teacher, like, oops, I know that's a liquid and here is why. And as, as a teacher, you're gonna set up your expectations because maybe you don't need to know or have the teacher or student respond to you. You just want the student to fix whatever. So then the student just did that. If I go back to the teacher view, I can see the real-time feedback. So once again, that's what I think is a big powerful element of this new integration is the real-time views and feedback that teachers and students can have with one another. 
And so now if I'm Ava and I'm done with this, notice on this screen that I'm on, I don't see anything about um, submitting. So if I go back to the Canvas course, click on open to attach and submit, this is where, and this is where I'm saying there's multiple ways for students to get to that document. If there's additional files that I want my student to add, so maybe I had them do a video that they have, they've uploaded or there's something else they want to include, or if they want to create more, they can add that. And then where it says submit, all the student has to do is click submit, submit. And it's letting me know when it was submitted. If I go back to the teacher screen and I refresh, oops, let me refresh the page. I now see it's been submitted. And once again, I can still click into the document and I can still leave some feedback there. This is also where I can then go to SpeedGrader. And this would be where the submitted files, if the student had submitted multiple files, you should see them linked here. And um, one thing I wanna show you, I'm gonna go back to Ava's page because she submitted, but if I go back and I'm going to add um, more, I'm gonna do um, helium. So if she submits, but then she's sneakily saying, oh, I forgot a few things I'm going to add without resubmitting. If I go back to the teacher screen, I'm not gonna see any of the new additions. So notice I'm not seeing the new submissions until she resubmits. So students can't submit something thinking, okay, I wanna make sure it's on time and then sneakily continue adding more. Um, but what I also like, notice how the edits that I made in Google Drive are showing up in SpeedGrader. So once again, when I make the recommendation to use SpeedGrader versus Google Assignments, I think you're seeing why, um, especially since we're, we're big Canvas users in, in our district. So, so going back to our presentation, um, a few considerations and recommendations. Uh, considerations, once again, the original date of turning of this going away, the original um, integration was June 30th. We've been able to get that extended to August 16th, so it's the Friday before school starts. And I'll post an announcement in Canvas just to help teachers remember. Uh, you and students will not lose any assignments or documents. You will need to relink assignments that are using the current Google Cloud Assignment external tool option. So if you were a big user or have used the original integration, you will want to uh, relink those. And I would do that before June or August 16th. It'll, there's still a way to relink it. Um, it'll be easier. There's, there's going to be a workaround if for some reason you don't, and I'll make sure that workaround is shared um, when August 16th comes. I just would recommend, with when I say my, my recommendations, I would strongly recommend use this time now to get familiar with the new LTI. I would start making the trans transition now, especially if there's assignments, you just wanna relink the integration versus create a new assignment. Um, once again, if there's assignments that you know you will use again next year, relink the files now, because it's easier now than later. Um, one more consideration I wanted you to, to be aware of is there is a folder, so when, you're, when you utilize uh, the Google LTI assignments in your Google Drive, it actually creates a folder called assignments and that stores the Google files and student submissions. This is for you and for students. So this is something too, when you think about cleaning up your Google Drive every year, um, you can always delete that file or if you always wanna have record of some student samples, they are stored in your Google Assignments folder. So, um, I'm going to go rogue. Let me see if I can quickly show you what that looks like. I don't think I renamed my folder. So in my Google Drive, when I have assignments, and I'm going to search by right here. So you'll see I had my main folder. It's a Google Assignments LTI 1.3. When I click in here, each folder represents an assignment. So here's the States of Matter 4 that I did today. And then I can actually see uh, what Ava has submitted. I'm not quite sure why there's two. Um, I wonder if that's from me exploring a little bit earlier. But that gives you an idea of what it looks like. So thank you for watching this Bite Size PD. If you'd like relicensure credit, we do have a form that you can fill out and we will go back and re 
can award you the relicensure credit. It's 0.5 credits on Midas. Uh, if you have any questions or need additional support, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, my name is Camille Cole. My email is camille.cole at canyonsdistrict.org. And any of your instructional coaches in your buildings can support you and, and answer any questions you might have as well. Uh, I hope you like this new integration. Good luck. And um, once again, reach out if you if you have questions or need help.